Hey everyone, Major Frenchy. Welcome to the first episode of Coding Future Pinball with Dufflinks. This um, episode, I'm going to focus on the following, adding the code to the table, adding flipper, adding slingshots, adding bumpers, adding kickers, which are going to be triggering solenoids or contactors, adding flashbar effects, and also table toys, fans, shaker, gear, <laughs> for specific action for example if you're hitting a target um do you want to have a, like a solenoid noise uh triggered when you hit the target so uh, that's going to be entirely up to you but i'm going to show you how to do this once we get there actually before i even i get into this um duff links is created by uh, ddh69 uh, big shout out to DDH. Thank you very much, man. Uh, your work is like unbelievable, and it and it basically brings the uh, gameplay to another level. P Future Pinball and a new play FX3, which uses Dufflinks as well. It triggers some some toys. It triggers some animation, some lights, some pop packs. Uh, without your work, it, the tables would not be the same. And thank you very much for your work, DDH. And uh, I believe that DDH has a donation link. I'm going to have it in the description below if you wish to donate towards the Dufflings project. So before you even get started, uh, take a step back and look at the table that you wish to code. And number one, like I've said, get the authorization from the author. It's just a question of respect. And number two, um, ask yourself, is there going to be any future update for that table? Uh, Slam Tilt, I love his table. This guy's a master. But Slam Tilt does a lot of revisions, a lot of releases of his table, sometimes up to like ver six versions of the same table. Like he adds feature, he adds um, events, he adds a bunch of stuff. So if you're doing version one of Dufflinks coding for his table, well, as soon as he releases version two, you're done. Like it's not going to work anymore. And it's not like you can take the code and copy and paste. You need to redo the work because there are new triggers. There's new, you know, elements. Sometimes he's taking stuff out of the, so it's basically, you got to redo the work. So wait until the table is mature. And then in this episode, folks, we're going to show you how to add the code to enable the Dufflinks function to the table. Adding flippers, slingshot bumpers, kickers, which are going to be triggering solenoids or contactors. Uh, we're going to add flash bar effects. Then we're going to look at table toys like fan shaker, gear motor, uh, just for table elements. Like, for example, hitting a target will trigger the solenoid or will trigger uh, the flash bar or whatever. So uh, it's going to be different than events, but we're going to get to events at some point. So that's today's episode. So let's just get started and we're going to add some Duff Links code to the table. So I, the table I've chosen for this tutorial um, is actually going to be a good example because this table is not overly complicated. There are some different elements for for you to grasp, like the concept of multiball, the concepts of uh, you know letters, all the letters being complete. For example, in this, it's going to be Jungle Girl. Uh, it's a beautiful table by Shiva. And this table, the link is going to be in the description below. It's available on Pinball Nirvana. And uh, of course, I did get the authorization from Shiva to code this beautiful table. Now, we have version 1.1 of this table. So let's just get into the table right away. So I'm going to, first of all, let, let me just show you what the table looks like. So that's going to be a beautiful table to code. Something I want to share with you, uh, it's going to be in the description of the video. It's my Dufflinks coding cheat sheet. This is my workflow. This is what I use to copy and paste the code to the different tables. And uh, it works really good for me. Uh, so what it is, I got it uh, broken down by steps. Step number one, step number two, step number three. 
4 and 5. And then here I got all the different triggers that we're going to talk about uh, while I'm coding the different elements of the table. Here's the first thing we're going to do, folks. So I've got the table opened up. And uh, just to give you a few, a few pointers, those are the different layers a little bit like photoshop every time you click on the layer a different layer element is going to appear so i typically start with just layer one uh, enabled first thing we want to do is uh open up the script and then the script uh, you're going to see it it's just below here so in the script typically you have all the authors all the different mods the different revisions uh, what's new uh, i've spoke about uh, the unique uh, flipper dynamic of Shiva. We're just going to add our information about dufflings just below here. And I'm going to copy this information and in right here. So I'm going to paste it like right here. There you go. So we have the information now in the table script. So we are ready to jump into the second step. This step involves adding code to the uh, table so we're going to trigger the dufflings uh, so the code gets run. All you need to do is to kind of copy the name because it's case sensitive. Uh, it's going to be called DOF timer. So we're going to go in the table and click on translate. I invite you to click on the different layers to see when the different timers are going to appear. So you kind of know where they are. There you go. So it's actually layer zero. You can put them on any layer, it doesn't really matter. These are the timers for the different events trigger in the table. So we're gonna add one. So you're gonna click on the special, you're gonna add a timer and you're gonna put it wherever you want. And we're going to name it, just like I said, DOF timer. This one is the only one we're going to enable. You're gonna check that box and we're gonna select 500 milliseconds for this timer and that's it that's all you need to do for for this step so step three uh, this one it says uh, just add this to the following section so i added some keywords here folks for to help you um, kind of situate in the script where to paste this information um, so you're going to look for future pinball begin play all right and we're going to paste the code in the section above it. So this here is going to be in this section above it. The control F command is going to be your best friend folks here. Uh, so we're going to find it. There you go. We found it. Create some space between um, like what's in green and then the uh, sub routine of future pinball begin play. And we're going to paste in here the code uh, described in step number three. And this is what I'm going to copy right here. And we're going to paste this. Uh, what's in red right here? Just, um, you can delete this. Okay. So that's the dufflings.vbs script um, that's unique to uh, dufflings. So that that's what it's for. So step number four, um, if you look right here, it says, again, look for future pinball begin play, but we're going to add the lines right here underneath it. So we're going to copy this. Then we're going to go back in the script and we're going to see the begin play right here. We're going to create some space and we're going to paste the command just below. So step number five, uh, we're going to, this is going to be for the user defined scripts. So we're going to look for end of ball complete and do control F and we're going to look for this. There you go. We're going to copy it below the end sub. So that's the end of the sub routine. So you don't want to put it above. So just put it below. We're going to copy all this right here. All right. We're going to paste it right here. Uh, again, what's in red, delete this. It's going to create errors if you leave the red. Now, just a, a, a few things here. Um, you're going to see that there's some already some stuff preloaded. Those E that you can see, this is for addressable LEDs. 
uh, we're just going to delete them for now, okay? And this one right here, um, just for now, just you can delete it too, or you can even leave it. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is going to be the rum call to get the code from the rum, okay? But we don't have it right now, so let's just delete it. Okay, so this is uh, step number five. And uh, right now, what I highly recommend is uh, to save your table. And every time you save a table, give it a new number. And then we're going to save it as, and I'm going to call it Jungle Girl 1.1 Dufflings 1.0. Um, I just did some tests, but I'm going to overwrite this. So you can see now you have your table. Um, I suggest that every time you do a new revision for something else, like if you add, example, bumpers, uh, save it as a revision. And uh, so because when, what happens is when you screw up and it, it's not working, well, you only have to go back one and then kind of redo the work. You're not losing everything, and it's easy to keep track of your changes. So I highly recommend this. Now, at this point, uh, you should be able to load the table and uh, make sure that you do not have errors when you load the table, because if you do, then something went wrong. You got a typo or you didn't paste it in the correct area. But typically, now your table should be duff links enabled and you should be able to launch the table without any errors. Now, the way I do my coding is I always uh, go to the flippers first. This is what I'm doing. So I'm going to click on the table, find the flipper on the, on the board itself, and click on it, and try to select it. Sometimes it's difficult. Uh, sometimes, see, there you go, left flipper. So then what you're going to do, copy this and go in the script, and do control F and then you're going to look for left flipper. Now you're going to realize that it, it can get very, very confusing. And then you will have to get familiar with this. You'll start to know what to look for. So typically what we're looking for is left flipper. It could be bracket hit or flipper left dot solenoid on. So this is kind of what we're looking for in the script. So we're going to keep, Pressing next, I'm just going to go because I know what I'm looking for. So once I find it, I'll be able to show you. There you go. So we have it right here. So see, left flipper solenoid dot solenoid on. Now what I'm going to do is in, we need to apply the code just below this. So I'm going to hit space. And here is my cheat sheet. And you can see on the left side right here is the element that we are going to apply. Now we got left flipper, right flipper, and slingshot, and so on. So all the, what's on the left is the description. What's on the right is the code that you need to put in the table. So I'm going to just highlight this, and I'm going to paste that just below the location where I, I just showed you to paste that right here. So you can see it's going to, uh, when the left flipper is on, it's going to actually trigger this left solenoid, actually the, the, the solenoid for the left flipper, right? Minus one is the code to use uh, as the default value in the dufflinks.ini file. The, usually the right is very close by. There you go. So we have the right flipper solenoid on right here. So we're going to go at the end of the line. We're going to add a space. Going back in my cheat sheet, uh, we're going to get the one for a right flipper. And we're going to paste it onto the uh, just below. So now, uh, guess what? You're pressing. Now, if you save the table, uh, you can go ahead and, and test it yourself. Uh, it's kind of the first time you do it. It's nice to see that your stuff is working. So save it as a different revision. The next thing we're going to do is a slingshot. Uh, you just look for slingshot. And uh, it's going to be the hit trigger. There you go. See right here? Left slingshot rubber hit. So every time it hits the rubber on the table, I'm going to show you here. There you go. So when you hit this on the table, which is the left slingshot rubber, it's going to trigger the solenoid left contactor 
assigned to the slingshot on the table. So now you understand why it's the left slingshot robber. Hit, space, and then we're going to, again, go back on the cheat sheet. And the left slingshot, there's the code for the left slingshot. We're going to copy this, and we're going to paste it just below. So this is the left slingshot. And if you look just below, look at that. We've got the right slingshot now. So we're just going to hit a space. We're going to copy the code that's associated to the right slingshot. And we're going to paste it right here. That's it, guys. So right now, we have all the effects for the flippers and for the left and right slingshots. The next thing we're going to do, folks, are going to be the bumpers. So it's layer number three. So we have uh, one, two, three. We have five bumpers, OK? So uh, then we're going to look for the numbers. So this is bumper one. This is bumper three, bumper two, bumper four, and bumper five. So the way um, I code those is, for example, let's just start with this one right here, OK? It's a bumper one. So bumper one is close towards the left side of the table. So I'm going to deploy the contactor linked to my rear left contactor. So that's how I want it. Sometimes the, the wording is going to be different. Bumper cap or bumper or just bumper. Usually what I do, I just look for bumper one. Bumper one. And let's see what comes up. Uh, OK, look at this. Uh, we have play sound bumper one add score. That's not what we're looking for. OK, uh, we're going to want something that will name bumper one. That's just a sound. There you go. See right here. Look at that, guys. Bumper skirt one hit. Here you can see solenoid pulse. So you know that uh, that's kind of what you're looking for. So I hit a space. So I'm going to go in my cheat sheet right here. So I've got all the different code for the different solenoids right here. OK, so we're going to look for back. Back left solenoid. So that's the one right here. So I'm going to copy the code and I'm going to paste for the back left solenoids. So that's bumper number one. And look at that, folks. Just below, I see bumper number two. Bumper two is the one. So I'm going to use the back center solenoid. So I'm going to uh, just copy the code for back center. And we're going to paste the code. Next one right here below is number three. There you go. So three is going to be the back right. Back right is this one right here. So I'm going to copy that code. And let's just paste that right in here. And we have, see, they all sequential. So now we got bumper skirt four pressure. It's uh, going to be center. Yeah, it's towards the center of the table. So I'm going to use center left for this one. I'm going to go back to the code. And it's going to be center, middle, field, and left right here. So that's going to be our code right here. I'm going to paste that here and and the last one right here uh, we're just going to paste the code for middle center right so folks now we have all our solenoids really for the bumpers the flippers and the uh, slingshots so now it'd be a good time to save the table okay going to save it as but Save as is definitely the way you want to go. <laughs> Just in case you screw up, right? Uh, so I'm going to name it this one 1.1. And I'm going to rename it. And now uh, I'm just going to actually show you. Uh, I'm going to launch it. And then I'm going to show you how it looks with what we just did. All right, we're back at the cab. And I'm going to show you the effects that we just added for Jungle Girl. Uh, we enabled the contactors and the solenoids for the bumpers, for the flippers, and for the slingshots. <laughs> All right. So right now we have no lights. We got nothing. But uh, let's just uh, hit start. And you will see that now we have the solenoid 
and uh, let's just launch the ball and you'll see that when it hits the bumpers So there you go. So we have all bumpers, slingshots are working, and our flippers. So now we tested the table. We know everything we, all the work we did works. So let's just move on. So a couple of other things you want, like basic stuff that you want to code are the kickers in the table. So you can manually look for kickers by looking at the table. So kicker, typically it's gonna be like a hole that you're gonna see. Um, typically there's a one near the plunger, uh, which is commonly called a plunger kicker. So let's just keep an eye for that. All right. Uh, oh, there you go. So it's actually layer nine. So see those brown? So I think we're going to get a, a kicker right here. So we're going to try to remove some of the layer. And we can focus on that. There you go. See, I found it right away. So plunger kicker. So that's going to be a term that you're going to use to find the code in the script. And we're going to look for plunger kicker. And look at this. So you have the plunger kicker, create ball. So that's the action of creating the ball, like a new ball. And uh, you can keep reading. And look at this, plunger kicker solenoid pulse. So that's basically the action you're looking for. So I'm going to create a space just below that. And uh, we're going to go to the cheat sheet. And we're going to look for the right slingshot, which is just right here. So I'm going to copy that code. And let's just paste that right here. So every time the plunger kicker will hit selenide pulse, uh, we should hear the right slingshot getting triggered, which is great. So what I usually do is I keep finding, okay? There you go. So we have uh, a new subroutine that's actually for create new ball. We got the plunger kicker selenide pulse, pulse. I'll just add the command. Let's look for other kickers on the table. So you can click the different things. Um, typically, it's going to be like a circle like this. So look at that. Look at on the, a name at the top. There you go. Kicker number two. So let's just look a little further to get good ideas. Kicker number one. So we got kicker one, kicker two right here. So it looks like we've got three kickers on this table. So let's just copy the name for the kicker one. And let's find where that is. Kicker one. So most likely now we're looking for kicker one solenoid pulse. Uh, which is going to be, let's see. Okay, so we uh, we scroll through the table and we found uh, a lot of times you'll have different sections for different functions like kickers, okay? Now, uh, you have here it says kicker one, top left lane, and it tells you basically what, what it does. So uh, we're going to look for kicker one. Oh, look at that right here, folks. We have, uh, it was well done in green, so we know it's for kicker one, but look at this, kicker one hit. So every time uh, that kicker is hit, you might want to do something, okay? Now, there's two things to keep in mind, okay? The kicker, when you hit it, like you don't want to hear the solenoid right away. It's basically when the, when the ball rolls in the kicker, uh, you don't want to hear the really the solenoid. You want to hear the solenoid when the ball is kicked out. So let's just look for a kick out or for um, typically that's what it, it it shows. Or you'll hear the solenoid pulse. So we're looking for those two things in here. So let's have a look. Oh, there you go. See. So basically that ends right here. So the kicker one 
is solenoid pulse right here. So that's when we want to hear the solenoid. Kicker one, uh, it's basically top right. So that's going to be the rear right solenoid. So let's look for the back right solenoid. So we're going to copy this code right here and we're going to paste it. Now, at the beginning right here, when it says sub kicker hit, so basically when the ball rolls in that kicker hole, you might want to trigger something else. For example, you can have your flash bar, you can have the shaker, you can have the, you know, the gear motor, or you can even have the strobe. So we're not going to apply anything right now because we're working on the kicker function, but just keep, in, keep that in mind. You, that, that's something you may want to trigger when the ball rolls in the hole. Now let's look at the other kicker, which is this one right here, kicker number two, and let's look for it. There you go. So same thing, folks. The subroutine for kicker two here, this one actually, uh, see, it is right here on the, on the third line of script. It says, then kicker two solenoid pulse, then it will exit the subroutine. So, that, so that's it. Okay, so we're going to add a link. We're going to add a line here, and then we're going to use the same solenoid that we used above because that's the same one. So we're going to paste that here. All right. And look below here. There's a kicker to timer. And we have um, kicker to dot solenoid pulse. So we're going to add the pulse right here too. So the back right solenoid, it will get triggered. And we, sh so here actually we're gonna have a multi-ball event, but then we have the kicker to solenoid uh, pulse that, so I mean, you may want to apply that action right away, uh, or you might want to, when we actually uh, start looking at events, for example, the multi-ball, you can apply the action there as well. But since I've stumbled upon this already, so I'm going to apply that, that, that like that code right now. So even when I look at the multi-ball later, uh, then I don't have to do it. So, so I mean, uh, you may be missing something for sure, especially a very complex table, guys. It is actually very difficult to understand sometimes the logic of the different events. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the subroutines and that will come with time and then practice and then understanding how that's coded. Uh, don't expect to understand all that stuff right away. And then I apply it to the best of my knowledge. And worst case scenario, if let's say something is not triggering for a specific event, then you can look into it and then you can start researching it. Okay, why is it not triggering when this event starts? And then that's when you start digging and trying to, you know, find it's very time consuming. For now, uh, we're done with the uh, kicker bar effect. So I'm going to show you how the flash bar works, how you can add effects for different things. So on the cheat sheet, you're going to see, I've got, I have a section for um, the flash bar. So here's the code that I use, I would say 90% of the time. I will just have it on flash for a brief, you know, period of time. And I have different, so for example, this is all five of them. So if you want all five of them to, to blink once, uh, that's kind of what you use. Uh, this I got them for the different color, like orange, blue, white, green, yellow, and red. Uh, you can even create your own other colors if you wish. But th those are the one I use most of the time. And uh, if I, for example, if I hit, you know, the left bumper, well, you may just want to uh, like uh, trigger the other left LED bar. This, the code is right here. Uh, it's it's actually F L O L for flasher outer left, right? And then it's it's F L F L is the flash. If you want a fade effect, it's actually F D. Every time I hit the bumpers. I want a five flash bar to flash green. So that's that's what I'm going to use. So remember when we actually triggered the solenoid, right, for the bumpers? Well, we're going to just add the five LED bar effect, okay? Now, now you know that it's called bumper one skirt, but there you go right here. So 
So the duffling back left solenoid for skirt number one. We're going to create a space and we're going to do control V. So now you're going to see that we have code for the five flashers that are going to flash green every time that bumper is hit. Okay. And then we're going to do the same for every one of them. So we're going to do this one. We're going to do number three number four and number five see the 50 here is actually the intensity of the the light so it's like 50 percent brightness you can put it 100 percent if you wish when do we want the green light to flash uh maybe when the bumper actually the left and right bumpers are hit we won't actually see the uh the five uh, the flash bar okay Slingshot, slingshot, uh, there you go. So we have the left slingshot rubber hit and then the the right and left. So let's just add the five LED flash bar for both of those. There you go. So now every time we hit the, fl the, the uh, slingshot, the five flash bar is going to light up. Now, if you wish, you can just have the left, maybe the, the, the outer left and the left flash, then you would remove all three other one. So again, that's your code, folks. That's you decide what you want. And at this point, what I would recommend is that you save your table. I'm going to do save as, and I'm going to call it 1.2. Okay, we're going to close this. We're going to say yes. And let's go at the cab and see what it does. You spend a lot of time trying to roll the ball and try to actually trigger your effect. Well, Future Pinball has a very cool feature which is called manual ball rolling. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So just go to uh, here, enable the mouse. For the pinball roller, uh, you're going to pick middle, which is going to be the middle mouse button. And here, the test roller X, use left and right, and then the roller Y up and down and click OK. And let's just launch the new edition. Now what we've done is we've set up in the script that every time I hit the bumpers or the slingshots, those five LED flash bars are going to blink green. <laughs> Okay, we still have our flipper noise, right? But now when we hit the bumpers, we should see the uh, flash bar. So let's give it a shot. There you go. Yeah, you saw some of them didn't light up because my, uh, my greens are dead. I gotta change those. I'm gonna hit the middle mouse button. And you will see here that now you're in manual ball roller mode. So I can actually bring the ball wherever I want. So it's easier to test your effect. So I'm going to test my left slingshot, right? So let's see if the uh, five flash bar lights up. Yep. Well, three of them do, but... <laughs> and let's try the, the, the right side. There you go. And let's try a bumper. There you go, folks. So that's how you apply effects to for the five LED flash bar. Now you can add different effects. For example, you can add targets here. So I'm going to show you how to set up a flash bar effect for the targets that are found here, or even these guys that are found here. Okay. So we've tested our table with the flash bar flashing green and it works. So we're ready to move on to the next step. Uh, before we do, I said that I was going to show you how to apply different flash bar effects to different things on the table. Uh, again, I'm not going to cover all of this because that video, uh, me coding a table would take, I don't know, a week. <laughs> um, because I mean, honestly, uh, coding a table what might take you honestly about a week to do uh, because all the testing, all the different things to do, all, you know, the publishing, the creating of the ROM and all that stuff will take uh, quite a bit of time. So, but uh, here's how you would apply, let's say, a flash bar effect to the ball hitting a target. Okay, so we have here on the table, 
this is like the uh, see there are four targets. Uh, they, these ones spell the word girl. Uh, we have on the left here we have jungle girl. Sometimes you will have to kind of zoom in to be able to kind of find exactly what you're looking for. And even sometimes you will have to click on the layers to define the different elements that will trigger what you're looking for. But this is basically your target right here. And see, I've got it right now. Look, DTGG. So G for, for the G of girl. Let's click on the other one. It should say I. There you go. R and L. So this is what you're looking for in the script. And let's find what we will. There you go. We've got it right here. T D T G G wall hit. So every time the ball hits that, first of all, you will hear the sound FX stand up target, which is actually found in the sound manager of the uh, future pinball. When we hit this, uh, we want the all the lights, the five flash bar, have all our flasher, flash white. Actually, no, let's pick, let's pick red. And I'm going to apply the red. So we're going to do this for, well, G, I, R, and L. Okay. And what I want as well is not only I want my flash bar, I'm going to show you how to trigger the strobe. Okay. So we're going to have the strobe flash for like, you know, half a second. So if you remember on the cheat sheet, I have all the different toys uh, listed and uh, they're at the beginning. So you will see that uh, strobe is right here. So here's my strobe, folks. So I'm going to copy this code right here. And let's paste that in the script. So below the last uh, light that's going to light up, we're going to add a strobe effect. So that should be cool. So when the uh, letters are hit, we're going to get some lights as well. OK, so that's L. I get them all. I didn't get this one here. There you go. So the first one will be okay. D T J. So we're going to look for those in the script. There you go. We got it. It's right here. So then after the hit, we're going to paste the lights and the strobe. And we're going to do this for all the letters of jungle. Okay. There's you. N, L, there you go. So now every time that's hit, <clears throat> we're going to get some uh, red flash bar and the strobes as well. So this is how you apply the different toys. Just before we finish this episode, a uh, couple of things. I just want to show you the trigger for the uh, the uh, five LED flash bar for the targets. So it's going to actually flash red and also the strobe is going to be triggered. And I forgot actually to show you that my kicker actually are working with the solenoid. So let's just test this. So I've got manual ball rolling on right now. And I'm going to hit one of the target, and then you'll see. There you go. Yeah, some uh, I, I got. I gotta change my. Uh, I've gotta change my uh, five LED lights because they are. Uh, dead. I got new one coming in, but all five will light up. And then let's just go to let, let's see the uh, the kicker right here. There you go. See, it goes out, and we hear the kicker. So let me just show you on the on the cheat sheet 
Um, if you wish to have something else triggered, well, there you have. You have the beacon, you have the, uh, you know, the, the knocker, you have the chime, which you can set in your dufflinks.ini, uh, by the way. It's uh, dv underscore c1 for the high chime. The blower fan, right? FN, the shaker, and the gear motor. So you can set all these toys uh, using the code that's provided here, okay? Uh, at at the, the end, just remember it's the time in millisecond. So 100 will be what basically one second okay so two would be 200 would be two seconds and 300 and so on okay uh, for example if you look at the strobe 50 is half a second so it's a quick flash uh, so that's how you can set the different um, variable for the duration of the effect well the end of this first part of coding tables with duff links uh, it's again, it's a lot of work. It's a lot to absorb, but trust me, once you get started, once you code a few tables, this will become more relevant to you. And just remember, coding is a skill that can be easily lost. I walked away for, I don't know, probably a year um, and I came back into coding and you forget very quickly. That's why having the cheat sheet helps a lot. Uh, keeping track of what you do, and uh, that way you do not forget. So stay tuned, folks, because in the set in the next part, uh, I'm going to talk about flashing buttons, the in lane, out lane trigger in the table, different events, and the drain. We might even create a little subroutine for the drain uh, just to show you how subroutines work. It's kind of cool, actually. So thank you for being with me, and we'll catch you in the next video.